suppose where any uh, design process starts these days is, uh, is usually with uh, computers and the etching process these days is no different for me at least. Um, I tend to design using AutoCAD, although AutoCAD is not really designed for this particular process. Um, it came to me uh, at uh, virtually nothing so I didn't have to pay for it so therefore I'm using a package that, uh, that you know, I'm used to using now so uh, I carry on. The main process uh, involved with the start of doing an etch um, is obviously when you've got your measurements from the uh, from the kit uh, from the prototype itself is to st start off with a box and the box is usually the uh, actual measurements of how the etch will come out. In this case this box that's on the screen here is 18 inches by, by 12 inches which is a common size for an edge. I also use uh, 24 by 12 on a regular basis but basically we start off with a box and then if you want to start drawing say we're going to draw a chassis and we'll start. So we have a very basic outline of a chassis there in that we have three bearing holes in this case being an 060 we would probably, off the drawings that we have, have a measurement from there to there to the front of the, uh, the chassis and the same there. I'm just drawing these lines in just for schematic problem, uh, so for schematic reasons at the moment, so there are not actually any dimensions. Um, and we would gradually add detail to that over and over again uh, until we've got the side of a chassis. Once we've got the side of the chassis like that, then with the AutoCAD it's very easy to repeat the, uh, the other side of the chassis by simply copying what is there, dragging it across and we've got the same again. So here we have a bit more detailed chassis. Uh, this is actually a chassis for a Fowler 2F uh, 060 dock tank um, which I drew earlier and shows a little bit more detail on it um, both sides of the chassis um, some spring detail, the bearing holes, um, various uh, lines for various things and holes for brakes etc etc a little bit more detail on that so when we've got to that stage um, we can then do a bit more filling in then the various things. Moving on a stage uh, this particular part of this drawing here um, is a panel. These panels are made a specific size to fit into the boxes of the kits um, so that basically governs the space that I have within there to put the parts that I need. These particular parts here, uh, the cab sides and tank sides for uh, another loco that uh, is under production at the moment which is namely uh, this particular beast here which is a kit snow 4 -0. This is the BR version of it, and the tank that you can see there uh, is there, and you'll notice that there are rivets on here which aren't on that drawing, and that's because if I drag this out on the other part of the drawing, which is there, that is actually the negative side of it, and there you can see the rivets there. And that part of the tank there is the fold line there, so that will fold round and the rivets at the bottom here and I don't know whether you can see there is a line there which is not on there because again that particular side is there. there. So this positive and negative side of the drawings as we call it, um, you can see that this side will create one tool for the etching process and to make it simpler here, these can be done in layers and this is effectively the other side of the tool. Um, I use various space on the etch, I never waste any space on the etch. This is all for one particular logo, but this particular space down here was spare. Um, so there we actually have that is effectively that part of this crane tank. Um, just a 
using up spare space in order to test out some future kits rather than waste the space because it doesn't matter how much you put in, in there, it doesn't cost any more to have it all in done. So when we talk about an etching tool, uh, what we're referring to is that the drawing that you've just seen is emailed to the company uh, that produces these etching tools from that drawing. And basically what the tool is, is just two sheets of acetate. When we were talking about the positive and the negative side of the, the drawing, as you'll see, in this, this drawing is in two parts. That will be the negative drawing and that will be the positive drawing. And what they do with this process is that they get a piece of metal, they spray it with a resistor, um, a chemical resistor, and it's placed between these two sheets and then it's exposed to ultraviolet light which shines through and wherever it's clear the light shines straight through and it fixes the chemical process uh, in the, on the metal. Where it's black uh, it doesn't and it does this from both sides so that on the reverse side you will have anything that's black on both sides will etch all the way through and anything that's just black on one side like here that will just etch through from from the one side once they've, once they've done the metal they take the metal out it's sprayed with acid and as I say the acid attacks the metal from both sides and etching So when the nice man at the etchers phones you up to say that the etches are ready, you go along and collect them and you will get a sheet of etch um, that will then go to make whichever logo this is. That particular sheet that you've just seen went to make this particular prototype, um, all the etch parts that you see here uh, on the logo uh, are then assembled, folded rivets punched out, etc, etc, which we'll go on to explain how an etch kit is put together. Uh, so but this is basically what you get back. There are obviously other processes involved in producing the kit itself then, because various parts, chimneys, domes, safety valves, etc, etc, have to be made, and that process for those is completely different to the etching process. We're just going to deal with the etching.